Okay, we're back, and now we want to talk about our last control on a river. So we mentioned that the slope controls what the river is going to do, the discharge is going to control it, and now we know that the velocity of the river is going to control what it's going to do. So the last thing we want to talk about is what's actually being carried by the river, and so that's going to be called the load. So types of loads are going to be what is dissolved in the water. And uh, so that means if you have a glass of river water and you look at it, you cannot see the dissolved load in it. It would be invisible. So what are some things that could be dissolved in water? Well, one of the things is we know uh, from a previous lesson that limestone is made of the mineral calcium carbonate. And so what's going to happen is if you have acidic water that gets into limestone, it's going to dissolve the calcium carbonate into the calcium part and then the carbonate part. And then both of those things are going to be dissolved and go into the water. Now, uh, we're, we're going to find out later that sometimes this calcium and carbonate can go back together again to make calcite and it's going to make the uh, rock travertine which we're going to find in caves. Okay something else that could be dissolved in water could be silica. Uh, there's some other ions uh, such as magnesium and aluminum that also could be uh, dissolved in uh, river water as well. Okay, then you've got material that is very light and it is suspended. So normally when, let's say you're, we're talking about the Mississippi River, and you scoop out a glass full of Mississippi River, it's going to be very muddy. Okay, so those are materials that are suspended in the water. So that's going to be things like silt and clay. Now if you take the glass and you put it on a shelf though, and you leave it there for a few hours, you'll notice that the silt and clay are going to start to fall down and accumulate at the bottom of the glass. So suspended particles are normally, uh, as long as the river has enough speed, they're going to be suspended in the water. But then as the river slows down, those suspended particles are going to fall out. Not the dissolved ones. So the dissolved materials are going to stay dissolved in the water until certain chemical um, criteria are met that would cause them to fall out of solution. Okay, then you've got your bed load. So the bed load is going to be things like rocks and pebbles that are on the bottom of the river channel and uh, normally they just stay there unless the there's a very high discharge in which case then uh, we're going to find that they begin to roll and slide and bounce along the bottom of the river channel. Okay, another property of load is the capacity, which is going to be the maximum amount of material that a river can have in it. And so this is going to depend on uh, the um, uh, velocity of, of the uh, river uh, and also is going to depend on the size of the river. So the larger the size of the river, uh, the more material uh, that it can contain. Okay, then you have competence, which is going to be the maximum size of the load that is contained inside of a river. So that uh, we're going to um, talk about very small competence, so that would be your clay and your silt, and then the very large competence is going to be uh, things like boulders and pebbles. All right, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to discuss how can a river erode its banks.